folks, for I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Let me dial things in here. Yes, that's me, that's me. You can tell I'm Hobo Tom. My classic hobo wrestling shirt I got many moons ago. I'm not here to talk about that stuff. I'm here about AEW. Yes, AEW. And also, Mr. Glenn Hunter. I guess I appreciate what you put on chat last night. Because you did chat with me, though. You, sir, always win twice with that six count. Well, look at that. That's it. And I think, yeah, I closed that. So I'm good to go. Yeah, I'll get some news and notes a little bit later. The schedule of stuff. But I'm here to talk about AEW. Like I just said, this is the AEW recap. And wow, it was weird. Um, AEW, I think, has gone back to suffering. Well, first of all, they've gone back to suffering. Because I know it was cold today here in Daytona Beach. And I swear I saw a breath of, a breath of frost. Come out of one Cody Rhodes. That's not necessarily good. So yeah, that's cold up there. That means muscles tighten up a lot quicker. Um, you catch diseases like colds, influenza, walking pneumonia, all that non-fun stuff. And that's not even talking about stuff that you could possibly catch here for bike week. Oops. I shouldn't have said that. Don't worry, folks. I'll give you a little taste of what bike week is like here in Daytona Beach as well. That doesn't happen for a few more days yet, so I still have a nice reprieve. Um, so this, AEW suffered a little bit, I think. The show seemed to go by fast. Very few things. There was a good squash match. I do like myself a good squash match, especially when there should be a squash match. Oh, I got my French weapon working, too. I was very happy about that. But wait, enough about what happens the going on here in the hobo office. Oh, shoot, that's right. Sometime this month, I have to make my three-year anniversary show. Wow. What the heck am I going to do? A day in the life of Hobo Tom? That sounds pretty good to me. 
Actually, yeah, wait, that does sound pretty good. What am I talking about? A day in the life of Hobo Tom. Indeed. Let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, where to start off? Yeah, AEW is suffering from almost having too much talent to the degree they don't know how to pace matches. They're not certain about the order of matches. Because we start off the show, Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet taking on Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq's not from New Jersey. He's from right here in Miami. Well, yeah, Miami, Florida. Not here in Daytona Beach, but here in Miami. Although supposedly his mother did speak at Bethune Cookman University once. I tried to catch a glimpse of the big man. He was not there. Oh, well. So, yeah. This, again, this is weird. This had that big money match feel. But yet, this was the opening match? I, with the way things went on, I kind of understand the main event. But yeah, this should not... I, I don't know. They should have honestly saved this match for the pay-per-view that's going to be this, this Sunday, of all times. And then the NWA, I think... I don't know if it's going to be the 14th or 21st. Well, I'll get into that, but yeah. So let's see here. So Cody Rhodes and uh, Red Velvet. <laughs> if you're a woman, you know, unless you're a stripper, not, never name yourself after a piece of dessert or, or, or soda. Like, 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 cher like Cherry Bomb was awesome. And kind of one of the first strippers I ever saw. She was cool. Red Velvet sounds somewhat like a stripper name for some reason. It just... And when she comes out in that baking outfit, you expect there to be a brass pole being lowered. Not a brass pole, not the brass ring being lowered into the ring. Oh well. That being said, um, Shaquille starts off, she starts to no-sell whatever Cody Rhodes does. And Shaq, very ba I do like what they did with Shaquille O'Neal. Very basic attacks. He put a big back body drop. Cody probably sold the heck out of that. Those slaps, the open hand shots to Cody's chest. The little offense that Shaq did fits Shaquille O'Neal pretty well. You know he's not going to bump crazy, although he did take one nasty bump. But left the ambulance for some reason. I don't know. If, I'll, I'll get to this. This is weirdness. Um, so that was really good. Uh, then he tags in Jade Cargill and then by rules... Because Shaquille's not going to be embarrassed by little Red Velvet. And Cody Rhodes is beneath fighting women. Red Velvet had to go in the ring. Uh, Jade. Again, pretty big kick. Red Velvet, a little bit faster. Um, Jade was actually, Jade Cargill's actually, for the most part, pretty good in the, in the ring. Uh, Red Velvet had a cross body. She had rolled through through a pinning attempt. Um, Cody takes out Shaq. Then the then Shaquille got the, the guns involved, Carlton and um, Austin Gun. I have no idea why. That should have been a disqueue. I forget if Shaq grabbed them first, but still, it should have been a disqualification. They don't know the rules in ECW, and then the tables came out. I was kind of nervous, and I'm like, "Oh my God, no!" And we'll see what happens then. Now Red Velvet hit a pretty big moonsault. Cody. And and one of the ringside people took the brunt of that, though. They really protected both Jade Cargill and Shaq in the match. So, yeah, it was it was just weird. Jade put the figure four on Red Velvet, then, the, then she brings up tables. Uh, Red Velvet hit, hit a pretty big instigary, and then there was some, like, was it this match or another match? There was some big whiff. Maybe it was this, I don't know, maybe it was a woman's smash. It was a, I don't know, some match there was a, Big whiff though. Um, Cody eventually Shaq gets the out is on the outside. Cody, Cody and Shaq both go through said tables when Cody cross body Shaq onto the tables. That was pretty good. It's like a hospitalization angle there with Shaq. They have to take him away. Red Velvet hit the spear. Jade Cargill hit. I'll tell you what. She's she is a long woman. Uh, she played basketball at Jacksonville University. I wonder if that's when I was teaching. No, because that was 2000... Uh, 
2010. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after my time, she would have, she wouldn't have been, she wouldn't have even been a freshman. Yeah. Well, she's only, I'll have to research that. I'll give you research facts. Um, Friday. I will even make a note of that. Research Cargill's age. Again, official time. Research Jade's age. There we go. Do some actual work for the show for a change. Um, then, yeah. Jade had, had that really long fall. Gory, gory special, I think. Or the gory bomb, whatever it is. That looked really impressive. Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Reilly will win. That that was weird. I'll tell you what, it was a it was a good enough match. They they did what they could do. Uh, the tables came out weird. Again, there was a hospitalization angle with Shaquille O'Neal. So kinda hard to tell where that's going. Whatever. Um. Yeah, you know what? Cheeseburger match. Then we had Pack and Phoenix versus Skylar or something. And D3. And I swear. I swear I've seen these people before in Raw. To the job to either Braun Strowman when he was running through people. Or it possibly was the Viking Raiders or the Viking Experience. After they became, uh, before they became war, ra after they were war, war, war raiders in NXT. So I swear I've seen those, I swear I've heard that name before. Again, you out there in YouTube land, let me know if you've heard of them as well. This was just a squash match. Total absolute squash. D3 got knocked to the ground. Skylar gets wrecked. He ate a uh, black arrow and then some weird driver by Phoenix. Phoenix probably felt bad for the guy. He's like, listen, I'm going to do my move on you. Just take it. Packing Phoenix won. I'll tell you what, honestly, in about three minutes for, for a squash match, it was a good solid ham sandwich. And there was the inner circle press conference. Yeah, but, uh, that was okay. Uh, Jerry got confused about the break. That was kind of the funniest part of the show. It's like, we're going go to go to break now. And then you just see kind of everyone pace around the ring. <laughs> Not Krono. There we go. I had a little something in the nose there. Not coronavirus, though. Uh, it's still funny to say that. Terrible. It is getting somewhat old, but I guess on YouTube, it's okay. So, yeah, um... That was weird. Jared's confused about the breaks. There was a couple of questions by Barstool Wrestling. The one guy from JR, I don't know who he was, Turkey Tits. <laughs> Whatever, that was funny. Um, Eric Bischoff shows up. Yeah, then the young, yeah, uh, Chris Jericho talks trash. Garbage about the young Bucks dad. Terrible dad should not be dad of the year. Why would he build a wrestling ring? He should have encouraged them to go to school. Yes, kids, always go to school. Finish your education, folks. It's too hard to build a wrestling ring and cost too much money. And then the Young Bucks came out. You hear the music. Super kick party! And I do have to get my friend that book. Friday, maybe. And then, of course, the rest of the Bullet Club come out. Because it's the Machine Gunner, Carl Anderson. Because once you're too sweet, you are too sweet for... Life. Yep. Uh, let's see. Then we got to the promo about the barbed wire death match. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And then I think we went on to the ambulance. And there was no one in the ambulance, which was weird. Because even Tony Giovanni seemed confused. And then we get to our next match. It was FTR and Tully Blanchard versus Jurassic Express. This was also okay. Uh, Dax, Hardwood, and Jungle Boy started off. Dax, amazing rope running. I'll tell you what, I can go I could go bounce off the ropes about four times, then I'm gassed. 
He was doing it like six or eight times. That was really good to see. Jungle Boy again takes out the other member of FTR, goes after Tully. Uh, there's a distraction there. J.J. Dillon slips the shoes. I forgot J.J. Dillon was part of the Horsemen. Uh, see, I always thought, to me, the traditional four horsemen, Ric Flair, Ole and Arnie Anderson, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, and Tully Blanchard. And I know there's been many iterations of the four horsemen. Those are the four horsemen I remember. Then the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Ole and Arnie Anderson, woo, Ric Flair, and Tully Blanchard. I think they all hailed from Minnesota, too, so that's kind of like the one thing. That might be the original group. I honestly forget. Like, there's been so many iterations of the Four Horsemen. It, it all kind of gets muddled all over the place. As J.J. Dillon slipped in the shoe, <laughs> whack poor Jungle Boy over the head with a shoe. You know, if you have a really nice stretch shoe, there are some pointy edges on those. You can bust someone open really easily. They're neat. AEW needs to have some blood. Every so often. Needs to be some juice. Needs to be some color, baby. Dusty Rhodes says, boy, there must be more color on this show. Uh, Tully, teases, Tully got tagged on a suicide type. He's like, what do you think, I am stupid? I'm an old man. I'm not diving through those ropes. Uh, Jungle Boy tries to get his finisher in on both Dax and what's-his-face. Uh, he was in a long time, too. Then Luchasaurus gets the hot tag in. Uh, Marco Stunts used it as, as a weapon. Tully does a bump. Let's go to see Tully actually do a bump. He, he, he knows what bumps to take. He's probably done that bump a thousand times. Marco Stunt weighs, 90 no, weighs 80 nothing pounds, so that's probably the safest bump he could take in, in this match, at least. Oh, he did take a really good slingshot suplex, but I'll get to that later. Then there was that Luchasaurus indie spot. Where it's an indie double German suplex, whereas he had the waist lock applied to the one guy, shoves him into Dax Hardwood, so the one guy uh, waist locks his partner, and then you just, just see the, the tower, the, the near Tower of Doom indie style German suplex. Meh. It, it was okay. And when it's fake and contrived like that, I do like the Tower of Doom spot. But when it's like that, when you know it's really contrived, it's like, just let go. So again, try to make sense. Jurassic Express and did that was a Frankensteiner power slam combo. FCR did the suplex splash combo. Tully with the slingshots suplex. That was good. Then Tully eats a kick. Uh, Jurassic Express did the Thoracic Express. However, the camera guy got involved. And yes, FTR and Tully Blanchard win. A tease of the four horsemen. Indeed. They need one more person. Because you have your mid-card jobber. You have your tag team specialist. Now you need that one one star. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see here. Jungle Boy ate that. Uh, then there was supposed to be an interview. Dax just started cursing. That was funny. Uh, this match overall, that was a solid, solid match. It's a cheeseburger match. And then there's one, like the interview was, was lousy because there was no interview. Then Paul White comes out and says, I got scoop for you. A lot of people are saying Bo Dallas might show up for AEW Revolution, which I already made the graphic for. Who knows? The next we had Nyla Rose taking on Ryu Mizunami. I remember seeing Ryu Mizunami a few times. When I've seen a little bit of Joshi, I think the few times I've seen her, it's, it's been okay. Every so often, I think she showed up early with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, what's the other one? FMC. She was on, I think she was on an exploding, like one of those like weird Japanese death matches. So, yeah, like the super bloody ones too. Like just cutting someone's head open with a freaking sickle. That should just be a salt. Oh, there's my pocket. There's my Boy Scout knife. But yeah. Um, 
So yeah, this match was okay. It was a classic start, uh, monster versus monster, the classic collar and elbow tie, collar and elbow tie up to see who's stronger. Uh, Rose is obviously stronger. Then there was a trade of blows, and oh, there was a, the, then I don't know what it was. Ryu did like the fake rope pull thing, two ways. I have no idea what that was. Again, I don't watch enough Japanese wrestling to know what that means. I'm sure a lot of people don't. It's like, huh? I do want to hear Jim Cornette's review on AEW. I think it's going to be entertaining and interesting. And it's just going to be a lot of bad stuff involved. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, to hopefully tomorrow, if not Friday. Uh, there was a kick out at one. So that's a strong kick out. Uh, Ryu used some kicks. Nyla Rose got low bridge. Ryu hit the guillotine leg drop. But Nyla Rose is on the outside. She teases a 10 count. Uh, what a what a setup. It was actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, because Nyla Rose got back in the ring. Ryu was like right there at the ropes. When when I see setups like that, that just means it's like, oh, they know exactly where to be and yeah, take some of the magic out of pro wrestling. Again, the guillotine leg, leg drop. There's some forearms. Nyla did, did a draping knee drop. That looked pretty good. Ryu hit an exploder suplex. Um, Ryu... Hit a German suplex, something, and actually Ryu Mizunami wins. I was shocked by that, and if I'm shocked by it, you know it's definitely going to be a cheeseburger match. Hikaru Shida comes in, um, nails Ryu with a belt, and so kind of lack of disrespect between two Japanese women. I know who's I know who's retaining our belt now. Yeah. This is an easy call. This this will eventually be Stone Stone Cold Lock of the Night. Maybe Dr. Tom might show up again. We haven't seen him in a while. Or or, or that crazy man. Ugh. I don't know, we'll see. Um, then we have a, a preview of the street fight that's gonna happen. Sting got interviewed, gets jumped a little bit by Sparks. And then Powerhouse Hubs comes out, hooks there. Eventually, Darby Allen, everyone in the ring. So, yeah. Then for this match, it was 10 versus Platinum Max of the the Acclaim. It's okay. I mean, this was a really short match for some reason. Uh, 10 starts off, quick roll up. Max makes, it was meh, he does some stuff. 10 goes up for his 10 punches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, 10. Yeah, you know how that count goes. Um, then on the outside, we get to the outside. Max beats up 10, of course. Uh, Max had a pretty good chicken wing there. And the brain buster looked great, though. He did miss the macho elbow. Jack Evans eventually, uh, 10's leaning against the ropes. Jack Evans shows up, nails 10 with a boombox, goes back underneath the ring. Platinum Max wins. Yeah, guess who's not w winning the ladder match? I think right now, unless there's a surprise person like a Bo Dallas, I'm going to say Scorpio Sky probably should win that ladder match. But yeah, this match is okay. Did what it's supposed to do. A ham sandwich. Of course, Matt pays out his bounty, two hundred forty thousand dollars for taking on a, a member of the, of the Dark Order. Miro cuts a promo about their match. I'll probably, I'll probably wind up missing that match. I'll be at work. Oh well. Then our main event, and I understand why this was the main event versus having Shaquille O'Neal as the main event. It was Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn taking on John Silver and Hangman and Page. Uh, Silver, great great technical wrestler. Can't say anything bad about that. Again, very classic Matt wrestling. Uh, Quinn, he gets worked over a lot in this match. Uh, Silver nearly gave him the girl of press. That's amazing for someone of Silver's height and stature. Uh, Matt went for the side effect in the apron and nailed that. That was good to see. Uh, Silver get, gets beat up a little bit. There was a heel and miscue. Page hits a fall away slam onto Quinn. Uh, then he hits a crossbody on, onto Matt Hardy. 
This rings punches on you. He's very upset with him. Hits, uh, he also hits a Death Valley driver. And then Matt Hardy gets in. He uh, starts calling for the Twisted Fate. Then, delete! 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 Obsolete? There is no more obsolete. It's just delete! And there is no decay either, because that's impact. Uh, silver. Oh, it was silver. Was it silver that, that had that big whiff? Might might have been. Uh, he went for the ground to pound the brain buster. Quinn hits a shotgun drop. He thought it was good. However, Quinn eats the buckshot lariat. John Silver and Hangman Adam Page win this match. Matt Hardy comes out. Uh, it was not okay. It was. It really wasn't. It was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. Matt Hardy comes out with a microphone in hand. Oh, I love the way Mike punches sound. It just sounds so vicious. It's actually really good sounding. Again, you ever get hit in the head with a mic, it's probably like the least damaging thing, but it sounds absolutely amazing. Um, so he did that. Uh, Hardy gets speed up at the... Matt Hardy should have been dead at the hands of the Dark Order. Then all the tag team, because it's going to be a tag team, Casino Battle Royal. Yeah, every, like, every, like, just, just empty out the locker room. They all go in the ring. End of show. Again, solid match. Solid show. A little bit of what's happening this week. Tomorrow, eventually, we're going to make some predictions. So this video is going to start processing tonight. I'll put this up probably by tomorrow morning. It'll be up. I'll do that. Thursday will be predictions. Eventually, I'm going to put down the race, the running course racetrack videos I have. I might do that two on two tomorrow. We'll see how things go. Tomorrow I go up to Jack's to fulfill my Lenten promise of visiting my, my poor friend who's, who's kind of in all kinds of bad right now. So she needs just a little bit of encouragement. Twisted Pixie, Hobo Tom is looking out for you a little bit. And then Saturday, uh, Friday is going to be a normal SmackDown show. Saturday, I'm off. I get to relax. Sunday is going to be the pay-per-view. I will miss the buy-in. I'll be at work. I'm going to miss the first match. If it's the Miro, Kip Saban versus uh, Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy, I'm kind of 